Okay, here's a short video uh, demonstrating my uh, simulator that I've built over the last five years. Uh, currently uh, holding short runway 30, getting ready to take 30 at Hillsboro, Oregon. Uh, in this video, I'm flying Flight Simulator 2004, but I uh, also have Flight Simulator 10 uh, loaded on the uh, system as well, and I can switch between the two depending on which aircraft I want to fly. Uh, this particular uh, scenery is uh, Flight Zone 02, Portland, Oregon by Flight Scenery. Excellent, excellent, excellent piece of uh, scenery uh, for a little bit of Oregon and uh, three of the airports there. So this is a uh, moderate size airport, not an international airport. And what we're doing is taking off 3-0, flying the Carinado, uh Cessna 182RG, which is a complex high performance aircraft. And that is so because it has variable pitch propeller, it has retractable gear, and it has flaps along with a 200 plus horsepower engine. Uh, this particular aircraft, the same aircraft I'm working my real world commercial pilot license on, so I practice in it quite often in my simulator for familiarity. Uh, so we've taken off 3-0 here. Um, as you can see, uh, all my head motion is being tracked. That is uh, courtesy Track IR5. Uh, there's a sensor on the top of the middle screen, which you can't see in this video, and it is tracking a device on the left side of my headset. Uh, this makes for very realistic VFR flight. Allows me to uh, look around, and uh, especially when you're flying base, base on the pattern to. Uh, see where you're at in relationship to the airport and when to turn uh, final. Um, you can see we got a six-pack analog gauge system on the instrument panel there. Uh, that is by a program called FS Expand. It's run by a laptop that's off to the left side of the screen that you can't see, uh, which is connected to the flight simulator server through a hub network connection. Um, so data is uh, sent over via uh, a client uh, server relationship with FS Expand and displays all my gauges on that LCD panel which is a lot cheaper than purchasing um, physical gauges because I can take and switch that to a uh, glass cockpit uh, or even a uh, primary flight display and multifunction flight display for commercial aircraft such as the 737. Uh, on the right hand side there we've got a, a slew of uh, go flight modules. Uh, the top there we've got the MCP uh, mode control panel which normally you'd see in uh, air carrier 737 series, 7 series Boeings and uh, Airbus aircraft. Not normally in uh, general aviation but works great for autopilot functions. Uh, you got your COM1, NAV1 radio, uh, also go flight module. Below that uh, is a multifunction module that uh, does my COM2, NAV2, ADF, uh, giving me my uh, DME for uh, one, VORs 1 and 2, and uh, also does my transponder for me. Below that is my GPS map 3, 9, or 6, an actual Garmin. GPS system that I use on real aircraft. Uh, I've got that connected via serial port into the main flight simulator server and FSUIPC provides good output uh, to use all the functionality of the GPS map. All right, here's a perhaps a video capture of a uh, short final for runway 30. You can see we're coming down. We're uh, we got 65 knots nailed. Uh, nice stabilized approach, 30 degrees of flaps. Uh, we get down into ground effect and we round out. Let that uh, additional speed dissipate as the aircraft sinks. We pull back on a yoke, increase that angle of attack, increase that lift, and touch down on the mains first in a good landing attitude and then we slowly let the nose uh, wheel come down. 
Well, that's my demonstration of my uh, sim pit. If you want to check out more pictures or need additional information, check out my website at www.timsaviationadventures.com. Till next time, blue skies.